Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so welcome to the second episode of Integration Workshop. Um, so today I won't be doing any hands-on because it's just another theory session like last time. If you haven't watched my uh, previous episode, I would highly encourage you to do so because I won't be uh, talking much about what I covered last time, but I will give you a glimpse of it anyways. But just for your own uh, benefit, I would highly encourage you to check my previous episode. I will put in the link in the description below, right? Okay, so in the last episode, as you remember, we talked about you know Salesforce integration with a an, you know third-party system, right? Where we talked about how to integrate accounts using data loader uh, products, and for the timesheet, we agreed that we will not be bringing uh, a data to the Salesforce because that's how they are maintaining right now uh, in their current system. So we will be using Salesforce Connect, okay? So that's fantastic. Now, and we also agreed that we, since the products, right, uh, the customer wants to maintain the products under current system for six months. So they wanted to, uh, uh, they wanted to maintain the product here in the current system and then push to Salesforce whenever a new product get created. So what we agreed, Okay, that's straightforward. We will expose, Salesforce will expose an API, right? And we'll give to the current system developers and they can consume the product API, right? And whenever the product get created, they can push the data back to the Salesforce. Straightforward, right? That's all good, but we got a, you know, a different uh, response this, this morning, or whatever you say, a second integration workshop where a user came back to us and said, look, Unfortunately, we can't do this option. <clears throat> they had a talk with the IT guy because IT guy said he's not a developer and we don't have a developer who can consume you know, a, this API and then push the data back. So they are looking for an alternative approach. Okay, so that's changed and put a different uh, you know, plan of action for us. So in that case, right, so we said okay that's great that's fantastic so since you don't have a developer so the only option is that we to pull the data in other words salesforce to pull the data right okay so now when that happens you know the first thing you need to understand you need to ask the right kind of question right because in a workshop doesn't matter integration workshop or a normal functional workshop or whatever workshop right you have to set a realistic expectation with the customer Right. And if some, you know, the, there might be a case that where when you propose something and customer says, oh, OK, this is possible. And the next day you realize the solution is too difficult. So you got to go back to the customer, you know, and say, look, this may not be a great approach. Let's try something else. And the similar way, the customer can come back to you and say, look, this is not what we wanted after talking to our external stakeholders or or other users. Right. So in this case, you know. Like you see that we had, they had a change of plan, so we can't do the product uh, creation automatically. So it will become our responsibility. And now, obviously, a third-party company will not let you use the system, right? In other words, they will not let you create an API on there using their database because they may not trust you or whatever other reason, right? <clears throat> and plus. It's not an optimal solution as well. Why do you want to uh, build an API on some else's system, right? So you need to understand the cost into consideration, right? When you sell any solution to customer, right, it's your responsibility to keep the cost into consideration, which is very important because cost is a driving factor behind any technological change that happens in an organization, right? If it's too expensive, the CEO or the stakeholder will say, nah, it can't be bothered, you know, it's, it's too difficult to justify, right? So that's why you need to come up with a solution which works for both people, okay? All right, so in our case, we agreed we're going to consume it, okay? So now you need to ask different questions, right? Okay, so let's go to different Jamboard here. So we're going to deal with integration here, okay? Uh, so we have Salesforce, okay? And, <clears throat> and we have external system, right? Uh, and oh come on so we have Salesforce here we have external system 
and we have a product okay All right so this is our main focus of attention interest today okay so the products get created here okay now we have an api layer right in between okay so we talk about that in a second api integration we can say so when we talk about an api right you can talk about two things here one is the soap and other one is the rest api yeah so these are the two things we're going to talk about today okay rest oh, come on rest api <clears throat> Right, so this should be your point of discussion, right? When you're dealing with, uh, you know, consuming someone else API, so you need to ask the IT guy. Fortunately, let's say for the sake of argument, the IT guy is here, right? So you can ask an IT guy, right? Say, what kind of API is it, right? What kind of endpoint is it, right? Is it an SOAP or is it a REST API, right? So the, in terms of SOAP, right, you have to consume an XML, right? In terms of REST API, you can consume XML or JSON, okay? So that thing you have to keep into consideration, okay? Right, now, if an IT guy says, I'm not 100% sure, you can ask them to find that out because that information is very important, right? And, um, okay, and another thing you need to ask the person, right? So let's say this, let me put this one here. Okay, so it could be anything, right? Could be anything, right? So, so you need to ask the person or IT person whether you can test an API, right? Whether do you have a dev, bo dev box or sandbox or whatever, right? Uh, so that you can test it, okay? So you need to request for that because, you know, your approach changed now, right? Because you are consuming their API. So it's important you have to ask them as many questions as you can. Right, so the thing you you need to ask whether you can consume the API or is there any documentation around the API? If they say no, most likely they will say no because sometimes the APIs are built by someone and you know they don't maintain the documentation for whatever reason, right? If you don't have a swagger information, that's fine. So if the if the IT guy said, look, I don't have anything, but at least you can ask the credentials, right, for uh, for the API to test it, right? That's that's the thing you need to ask. Because obviously that's an important piece of information because you have to test it. The reason why you have to test it because you need to understand the data structure. Okay, you need to understand, uh, you know, the data set that that get returned by the API, because a data set will actually help you build your own data set, your object in Salesforce. Okay, so what I meant by that, let's say you have, you know, something like, you know, all right. You have a account, right? You can have this one. You have value one, right? You have B. I'm just give me a silly data structure, right? And you have something like this JSON, right? Okay. So something like a JSON structure. So if it's very important that you get the API response, right? so that it will help you build the information that you need to be pushed to the Salesforce. Because for instance, like the product here, right? Product contains say product code, okay? It contains product name, yeah? Contains the description, okay? And it contains a quantity, just for the sake of information, right? Argument. So for information, okay, just to keep it simple. Um, so if it contains the four information, right? So your you have to know the field name, okay? Uh, what uh, you know the product uh, code field name, name field name, description field name, quantity field name, right? So that you can ma map that inside the Salesforce, okay? So that's why it's good to get the data set, right? Okay. Now you need to talk about uh, the payload, okay? So let's go to the the next here okay so let me build the so we are talking about only about this api here okay salesforce and so we have an excel system and we have 
Excel system. Okay, so what do you need to talk about in between this, right? So we have an API. So the payload of data that get returned, right? So how heavy is the data set? Okay, so what I meant by that is that let's say you query, okay, say you query from an external system using an API. Say, so get me the product information. So you need to ask them, are there any filter condition? Okay, if there are no filter condition, you know, you really don't want, you know, Salesforce be pulling like 100,000 product information every single time, right? So the API should have the filters in place, okay? So you need to check those information, which is actually a part of your API testing, okay? <clears throat> so it's very important that you test this when you do this, okay? So just to keep into consideration, right? So you may ask this question, I mean, you may or may not get the response, right? Because the uh, IT guy, if, if he, if he or she will, if they straight away tells you that, look, I have no idea about the API. I will find out stuff for you. So there's no point in asking any more question, okay? But you can still uh, ask one, like you know. But let's say you know a good case scenario, right? Uh, you know we are working on a good case scenario, right? So that you can ask the right question, right? If the IT guy say, look. I know a fair amount of idea how the API works. You, then you need to ask, is this API bi-directional? What I meant by that, so in this case, right, Salesforce will consume it, okay? So a product information get consumed, a product get created. So can Salesforce push a created ID back to the external system, right? That's what I meant by bi-directional. Can external, can this API accept the data and push it back to an external system. Is that possible, right? You need to ask that. If it's not, that's good, okay? And another thing you need to ask, what about the error handling, okay? So let's say, you know, external system has P1, right? P1 product, P2 product, and P3, right? Now, out of P1, P2, and P3, P2 failed during an insert operation, right? And Salesforce thrown an error, saying that product code missing, okay? Now, how do you let an external system know, right? That's the thing you need to, you know, ask, that you need to discuss as well, right? Do they expect uh, to be notified using an email, right? Or through the other channel, okay? If API has an error logging mechanism, right? You can use an API to push that information back, but if it, for, for some reason, if API do not support that, most of the case it won't. You can use the email notification option, right? So that's one of the options. And you can also suggest other possible options you can do, right? So you need to check, right? Uh, sending a text, right? You need to figure out how to do that, okay? So that's, that's one of the approach you can do, okay? Now, in our scenario, right? Think about it for a second, right? Think about it for a second, what, uh, the things I'm talking about, right? I straight away jumped into, can you see a problem here in my approach? See, I can tell you the one problem here, okay? I straight away suggested, okay, we will consume it and the APIs, right? So, and I straight away, you know, you know, first thing came in my mind, even in your mind, you might have thought, okay, consumer and API. So let's write a code, right? I mean, let's be honest, right? That's the first thing that came in your mind, right? I mean, if it's not, that's well and good, right? First thing that comes in my mind, okay, I'm going to consume it. So I'm going to write a consuming API, Apex code, okay? That's that's fine. That's one approach. What if there are external uh, utilities available in App Exchange, right, which is free of cost? Can you use that integration? A middleware to consume it right so what if you have more than one uh information that needs to sync in okay so is a code is the right approach you need to think about it right what if you find a third-party app say which is free of cost and you can uh, use this in between yeah can you use this in between and to plug in between and without writing a piece of a code you can pull it okay or let's say you found a third party app which is where you have to pay for it but the amount of time your developer like a salesforce developer 
takes to uh, you know build say a salesforce developer let me uh i'm going to talk about the cost now because it's very important right as i said the price drives the technology right if a company do not have enough money right no matter what suggestion you give right they will say nah it's not important think about a scenario right you you see you're going to talk to the ceo of a company right and your entire solution costs let's say 100 million uh, not 100 million 100 excuse me hundred thousand dollars right and hundred thousand dollars for building this entire ch- stuff right and if the ceo said i don't have money yeah flag it i don't care i'm happy with the external system that's gonna end up in that will be the most likely result outcome okay so you as a consultant, right, it's your responsibility to come up with an optimal solution, which works for you, right, because you are getting a new customer and works for the customer as well, right? Because, you know, you have to keep the cost into consideration. It doesn't matter you're a tech consultant, a solution architect, or a functional consultant. Cost plays a very, very critical role, right? And that's often the least talked about topic, which is the most unfortunate thing, right? You know, you can suggest a brand fancy, you know, solution, but it costs a hundred thousand as years and not, you know, buggered. I don't care. So optimum and I'm not saying to use the easy route, right? I'm saying the optimum route and which is cost effective at the same time. Okay, let's say uh let's say in this scenario, okay, a developer takes say four days, you know, optimum estimate to build it. Okay, and you charge, let's say uh, three thousand dollars okay uh for each day for that person so that's like 12 grand okay and now let's say you have an integ- integration piece which you can buy from an app exchange and it's a one-time fee and it costs them say thousand dollars to buy it okay and let's say it, it take a, a one day for a developer to set it right so that means it will cost them total four thousand dollars because one day developer fees is three thousand and a thousand dollar for integration four thousand dollars to test it and build it see so you have to keep those into consideration so you know please do not jump out of the code you know i know apex code is a is a great stuff right you can do apex code right you know i've been a programmer most of my life right i I tell you that I've been pro- I program in C, I program C++, I program in Delphi, program .NET, right? .NET is my favorite language, along with Delphi, right? So, I, I'm, I'm, I can tell you that coding is amazing, but, you know, when you're, when you think from an architect perspective, right, you should have the customer interest in mind, right? So, you, you have to always suggest the best, you know, possible solution. Okay, so in this case, right, in this scenario, coding is not a good option because you have an integration hub or you can say integration toolkit uh, in an app, app exchange. It costs $1,000 one license, right? You don't have to renew it anymore, okay? If you want, you can renew subscription for any update, okay? And and, and a day of a developer job, so $3,000, you know, give you a solution, which is fantastic, okay? Right? So... That's one of the things you have to keep into consideration. Let's say if you are going a developer route, right? So developer route, which is great, okay? So let's let's say you don't want to build using an integration connector or whatever, okay? So we decided we actually going to build it, right, using a code. So you're discussing with the customer, right? So if I, I can consume an API using an Apex code, and this is error handling, so you can ask what happens. If it fails, how do I notify you? Can I can I build a custom object where I can put the log information? That's the one thing you can do, right? So you can go back. So you can say, look, this API integration, right? So we are dealing with this integration. Let's say we agreed to this, okay? And so and it's a and we also agreed based on the questions we asked that it's a one unidirectional push, okay? So now you have to get the test API to test it, which is very important. If they do not have it, that's it. They only have production. So you need to get a permission from a customer where they can test it. Because if you are not pushing the stuff back to the product, usually it's it's never recommended to use the production API because, you know, S can hit the fan, right? If it's a bi-directional API. Imagine you're pushing a wrong data to external system, which is live. And you're going to, you know, make 
a mess of a data there, which is, you know, the thing with the, the thing is that, you know, a lot of humans error, right? We are biological machines, right? We do make mistakes. We are not, you know, perfectly designed robots, right? You know, which exactly do the stuff. It might be in future, we might have, you know, biologically designed advanced human being, humanoids, you know, you know, possibly thanks to human cloning, which might happen, right? probably 50 years where we can see the better version of human race but you know sorry I digress but just give an example right things are prone to human errors right when things are prone to human errors you know mistake can happen so never assume anything whenever you're doing a workshop right you have to keep human error into consideration which is very important right and uh, error handling which is the most important thing okay so in this case we talked about kind of API is going to use with a REST API SOAP, okay? So we settled with REST, okay, which is great. And uh, we talked about the payload, you know, how you know, amount of data that comes in, right? And what happened, there's an error handling happens, okay? And another question you need to ask, are they expecting a synchronous product creation or asynchronous product creation? What I meant by that is, let's say a customer created product here, do they expect to see that information right away? In Salesforce, or they can wait, right? If they say they can wait, right, then you can use asynchronous batch processing, right, uh, here, and then you can schedule it, let's say, 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. to pull the information, okay? If they say they want straight away, then you have to use a different approach, right? So, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Uh, the reason why I started with workshop because to give you a glimpse of how a consultant do a workshop, I've been fortunate that I had an opportunity to work with amazing functional and technical consultants in the past. Don't, not on the Salesforce space, but I mean, at, on Salesforce space as well, but more on other ERP platform space. And I've seen how those people uh, conduct the workshop. And I, I mean, it's amazing, you know. So I wanted to share some of the information with you so that you know, you can get some value out of today's session, right? And it's important, right? So the things you need to understand, right? Never assume anything when you enter in a workshop, right? Always uh, be respectful to your user, right? And the users can intimidate you, but please be respectful to them. It's very important, right? You maintain a professionalism, right? And keep cost into consideration when you are suggesting a solution, right? And please do not jump into a solution straight away, right? Have a discussion, you know, ask more questions, right? That's very important, right? Please uh, understand one thing, right? Users are there for a reason. They want a solution to the existing problem, right? So as long as you provide them a better solution, they will be keen to uh, get on board with you, okay? So that's the main thing. That being said, greetings and adios. Take care.